Hello uh, and welcome. Uh, I'm Greg Thompson, the school committee chair here in East Almeadow. I'm joined today by Gordon Smith, our superintendent of schools. Hello. Uh, we just want to take an opportunity today, just a, a few minutes of your time, just to go over some of the um, reasons behind our decision to go to a fully remote program and some of the questions that we've all been getting. We thought we'd uh, come out to all of you uh, via this video to see if we can answer some of those things and clear thing, some things up. As many of you know, the school committee met uh, the last over the last week, and we had two meetings, uh, both lengthy meetings. So understandable that a lot of folks weren't able to tune into everything. But we had lengthy discussion, brought in parents who any parent who wanted to speak could certainly speak at the beginning of our meetings and give us their thoughts and such. We consulted with our health experts. We have a pediatrician that we consult with, um, Dr. Clark. We consulted with our health director and our lead nurse here at the school district as well. And basically what the school committee has decided to do is to go a fully remote plan. We had the option of a fully remote, a hybrid plan, which would have been two days in. Wednesday would be, um, everybody would be remote, and then two days in for the other half of the class, so broken into two cohorts, half Monday, Tuesday, half Thursday, Friday. And, and then all the, remote on Wednesday. And all remote on Wednesday. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the other would be a fully return to normal school, which we really didn't have the option to do because the guidelines required us to be six feet apart on a regular basis to have our students separated at six feet. And as we set up classrooms, we found that it would be impossible. So our really our only two choices were the hybrid or the fully remote. The committee had, again, lengthy discussion to decided to go fully remote for multiple reasons. The first was the, if you look at the basic hybrid model, it does only allow for two days into the school and then three days out. So when half of the class is in, the other half is learning remotely for those two days and then vice versa. So it actually creates less cohesive instruction uh, than we would have if we were all one model, say we were all able to get into the buildings or we're all able to go remote. That's the first thing. The second issue is the unknown of what's to come. We're all acknowledged that we're in a pandemic right. and um, we don't know what's going to happen. There are districts that have opened up and have seen positive cases either in their buildings or um, with family members or those that live in the household. So we have to be aware that there, that potential could happen. If a positive test was to happen, say a student of ours had a positive test, then we would potentially have to close down up to half the school, meaning um, if we broke them into cohorts, the remainder of their cohort, so half of their class would have to quarantine at home for 10 to 14 days, waiting for a test result. Currently, test results, according to the health officials, are coming in three to four days right now, but it's anticipated as we get to school and then more tests are required, the lag time on the testing results will expand. So if we look at 10 to 14 days, Again, half of those, the students will have to go home for 10 to 14 days, all be tested, and wait for a, test, a negative test result to come back. In the meantime, the teacher may also have to be quarantined and go home 10 to 14 days, which would put us uh, at the need for a substitute teacher to then teach the other remaining students who didn't have direct contact with that positive um, test result and uh, we'd have to have a substitute teach them. So as you can see, it comes very disjointed and unpredictable in terms of if positive test results happen either at a family level, in a household, or even in the school, and even a, 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 um, a faculty member is it, certainly possible. If that were to happen, and we would probably assume it, it, it's likely that it could happen, then now we have some students are learning on a hybrid model, two days in, three days out. Some students that were at a hybrid but were forced to quarantine and now are at five-day learning, remote learning. And then we have the opt-out students who originally decided not to come into the hybrid. And so they're learning remotely five days already because they opted to come out of hybrid. It made for a very disjointed uh, way of educating our students. What we decided to do was go fully remote. We're asking the community to, to give us some time. We're talking about three months. And in three months, we'll revisit it. But by going full, fully uh, remote, we provide our, our staff, our teachers, our educators, our paraprofessionals an opportunity to focus on the education of the students for those three months. Um, up to January 15th would be the potential to return. Um, but we as a committee would look at the, what's happening in other districts, 
And if we're able to come back safely and if we found that success in other districts, then that's a good thing. That means a lot of kids didn't get sick. We'll get right back to it January 15th. We would notify uh, families by December 15th. That would be our goal uh, to decide for any kind of change we might have by then. And, and that's three months from now. So, Gordon, if you want to just explain how the day might look a little bit for students who are sure. fully remote and some of the other uh, things. So, um, thank you for the the explanation in terms of breaking down what would happen if we have a positive test, because uh, that was important. I mean, the two immediate benefits of going fully remote is one, you're ensuring to the best extent possible that our entire ELPS community is safe. And then two, and you mentioned this, Mr. Thompson, that it now focuses our entire staff and all of our resources on one model. So the, the fact that the school committee voted on Thursday, even though we had been planning and working on the potential for three models, because that's what the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has asked districts to provide them, we now have shifted that focus. We've, we've provided the um, department with that information, but we've shifted the focus even more intensely to the remote model. Um, so. Just to give uh, parents and families an idea of where you can find the remote model, we have our web page, district web page here up on the screen. When you get to the main page, if you scroll down to um, where it says the news section, and right at the top part of that news section is ELPS reopening plan. Uh, and we tried to set that up so that it's user friendly because it is now a longer document and we'll continue to update it. So if you go into the table of contents, there's a link to get to where you can check out sample building schedules. But simply put, what we're focusing on is ensuring that at each of our buildings, we are putting a schedule together that follows basically the school day. For instance, at um, our three through five schools, school starts generally at 8.15 when we're in person. Their schedules will begin at 8.15 uh, in the fully remote model. And then each building has broken out the day in accordance with what they're looking to accomplish throughout the day with instruction and learning. Um, so at the elementary level, you're going to see the literacy blocks. You're going to see the math block. You're going to see um, where specials come into play in the remote model. And throughout the day, they're going to have live teaching, as well as time where they may be guided as they're doing independent work, but they know that they can reach out at another point during the day to their teachers for help on that work. And so we're building all of that in. We're also thinking of building in to the elementary level time where parents might be able to sign up and talk with their teachers and um, get an idea of how things are going. Communication for each school will come through one platform. Uh, first, the, the learning management system will all come through Google Classroom. That's where teachers will be putting their assignments. That's where teachers will um, be updating information for students that they can utilize during some of the independent time. Uh, that's where they'll also post lesson notes, lesson plans, and so forth. On the other side, um, at the secondary level, the PLUS portals, parents who have students already in the middle school and have students already at the high school know what I'm talking about. They can register and have an account, a PLUS portal account, that allows them to look at the student's schedule to see what kind of progress they're making in various courses. And the students also at that level have their own PLUS portal account so they can check grades, they can check when um, assignments might be due and other announcements from teachers. At the elementary level, our schools will continue to use Blooms, which many of our parents who have students in the elementary schools have already begun to use and have accounts. And you'll see communication coming from the school and communication coming from the individual classroom teachers through those uh, two platforms. And Gordon, I just wanted to make a point that I know you've stressed a lot that the, the, it's going to look different than it did last spring. Sure. Um, last spring, as we can all uh, acknowledge, 
it was one day we were in school and by the way you're not coming back tomorrow so let's figure out how to educate remotely this has given us an opportunity to focus the staff which we know uh, is already working on it mm -hmm. to focus on what this program is going to look like how we're going to um, communicate with with students how we're going to communicate with staff I know the school committee has uh, set a priority that we want some non-screen time too so right. if teachers are able to be creative sure. uh, that certainly will be valuable and you know there's still a lot of things that need to be worked out I know you and the staff are working on it but now that we've chosen to go remote you know we know that we're going to be fully remote for a, a bit we have a focus for all the teachers mm -hmm. and certainly we're on our way to do that so the program will be more robust it will be more scheduled um, kids will have to check in at the beginning of the morning yeah. and they'll have to check in throughout the day with their teachers also maybe you could uh, briefly talk about what kind of supports we might have for absolutely um, some different situations that we might have sure yeah so uh, all of the above so we're looking at opening the school year <clears throat> excuse me and running all our buildings the way we have always run them in terms of grading uh, establishing uh, assignments, taking attendance. So at the beginning of each day, we will be taking attendance at the start time um, for a given school. And then certainly uh, at the secondary level where there is an attendance policy regarding um, when you might be in jeopardy of losing credit, specifically at the high school level, that policy will be in place. So not only are we taking attendance for your first class, but each teacher will be taking attendance throughout the day, and the high school schedule will follow the basic high school times of 725 until 145. Um, some of the other supports that we're trying to build in um, and is, an, is a great benefit to being in a fully remote model so that we can bring all our resources to that instructional model is we are building in extra help times. We also will probably be utilizing our paraprofessionals uh, in a few different ways. All of our paraprofessionals will be uh, outfitted with uh, a laptop and so they will be able to not only interact as they've done traditionally over the years within a given classroom, but they also may help us bring another level of support to say a small group or even an individual student who may in some class be struggling um, and one of the things that we are increasing is our level of support and engaging families uh, basically on a daily and weekly basis we will have teams in each of the schools that we're calling our multi-tiered support systems teams and they're going to be looking at when students uh, might be missing classes right. um, our students struggling will get that information from teachers and that group along with our administrators will work on developing individual plans to help students and make sure that we're providing the support we need and that's to any student that finds that they're struggling with this model versus a student that typically is successful in a in a traditional model but we're going to identify kids like that right away and certainly families can look for uh, extra support. Absolutely. We're going to try to be some, do some flexibility with hours. We recognize that this is difficult. We recognize families uh, are working. They have uh, perhaps one or two uh, parents that are away or, or caregivers that are away working during the day. We're going to see if we can offer some assistance, uh, almost like a help desk at, in the evening sometimes. There's a lot of pieces that we still have to work out. But again, I just wanted to go back and really the point of this video is just to say that we've, dec we've made the decision we're focused on the reopening that will be fully remote. Our staff is going to do the best they can knowing what they have in front of them for the next three to four months and fully focused on the best educational experience for all the kids. We could have gone in, and I want to say this because I mean it, I tried, and I know Gordon, you did, our hardest to uh, be comfortable with coming in. I think right. in the end, at least for me, it just is more go cohesive to have a, a fully remote program for a couple of months, focus on that, focus on the education, and not on the logistics of kids being in masks for six hours a day. And please recognize that it wouldn't be the same. Classes are now set up in um, rows and desks. Right. Students would have to be six feet apart, masked all day, teachers with masks all day, and it just wouldn't be what it was last year. We are hopeful, and we know we will get back to what it was once. This will all pass eventually, even if we have to wait for the vaccine that gets us to next year. My hope is that 
we can get back into January, perhaps in the hybrid model. But if we can't, we'll make that decision when we get there. But I think we're on, on track. Mm -hmm. We'll give teachers some flexibility. Mm -hmm. And I just would ask that parents have some understanding on the gravity of the decision that we've all made. Um, this is the direction we feel is best for the kids for this time mm -hmm. that we are living. The pandemic will pass, and we will get back to regular education. Let's take a few months to, to focus on the education. We've also tasked the staff to do some non-screen time because mm -hmm. we don't want the kids. We know we recognize they're on their phones all the time. So right. to say you have to be on a screen six hours a day is not fair to them as well. So we're challenging our staff to make this a good learning experience that doesn't overemphasize the computer and the technology. We're asking a lot of our staff but I, I, I know this because I know the staff that they're going to make our education top notch compared to what other communities are receiving because of the continuity of it all mm -hmm. and the focus of it all and because of the, the staff and how dedicated they are to these kids. So um, I think we're in the right track. What I'd like to do going forward is to continue with updates like this, Gordon. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else you wanted to so put out there? So um, just to the points you're making, certainly. I I can't say enough how exceptional our staff is across the board. Uh, not only have they been basically volunteering on any number of committees this summer, but uh, now with the decision that the school committee made, their planning has increased. Uh, and so two points to that. It, it will be a robust model, um, and the sample schedules are certainly up on our website, and then schools will be sending out more specific information for your child in that school. Uh, and then the, the second point um, that I want to make, and it's something that was brought up at the uh, school committee meeting, is that, especially at the elementary level, but we're going to try to do some of this as we near our start date with students of September 16th, we will have small group introductory meetings um, for students and their elementary teacher. So our, our staff um, is really working at that to figure out how we do that efficiently and safely. And to the point you were making about um, live instruction through obviously um, the computer in remote learning as well as some more traditional tasks to get away from screen time, one of the things that all of our elementary schools are talking about is in those introductory meetings, that might be the time to provide some of the traditional materials, the workbooks, and some right. of the things that they utilize in their classrooms. And just make sure that we connect with our students, which is ultimately the key to making all of this successful. Right. Establishing that relationship, establishing that connection, um, and then certainly throughout monitoring so if someone needs more support we bring that support to right. them and that's the key i think there's just adapting to the needs of the community as we go along this is unchartered we have a little bit of experience with the remote now mm -hmm. uh, it will be better than it was i'm convinced of that and uh, certainly we'll provide all the technology the students need we have chromebooks or iPads for every mm -hmm. single student. If families still need those, they can let us know. And uh, we're also going to have some IT support for those that are worried about the technology. We'll have folks that can answer their questions. And uh, just the last point that mm -hmm. parents and families will be hearing about the opportunity for their students to come into the buildings, meet their teacher for a, a designated amount of time, perhaps in an hour, in a small group, in the first two weeks of school, and that'll be coming soon. So they'll have a chance to build some rapport with their teachers, right. um, have some face-to-face -face time. Again, it'll be a safe social distance manner. We right. do it outside if we can, certainly fully masked when they come in. Um, and then have some socialization potentially with some other kids because that's certainly an important issue that we know we're lacking in this model. We recognize that, but and you know we'll, we'll do the best we can with that part of it. So sure. uh, I think we're on the right track. We have direction. We're going to stick with this plan. And as I said, I'd like to just come back to you and with some other short videos uh, produced here at LCAT and get the information out to families and caregivers as quick as we have it and as informed as we can be. So. I would say in another week, we'll probably be out with our next, and as we go forward, we'll, we'll keep the community updated. Right. We, we can become more specific in each one of those areas. Exactly. I want to thank everybody for their time today and their concerns and their uh, questions that they've asked. Certainly, we've had a lot of participation from the community, which is always welcome. So thank you all, and uh, have a good day. Thank you.